Hi, this is Paul Ward, and welcome to another edition of Farm Talk. I'm very excited today. We are in Old Agora, California, at Heaven's Hill Estate. Our special guest is Neil Martyr. Neil, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here. And we want to thank our sponsors, Opus Escrow and The Money Store. So, Neil, you are the proprietor, owner, founder of this establishment. I am the lucky guy, along with my wife, Gina. This is a winery and wellness center. It's also attached to your personal residence. You've created quite a Garden of Eden here. I understand now why it's called Heaven Hills Estate. And uh, you are farming kind of right on the edge of uh, an urban area, but in a little kind of garden spot. You're, you're, growing, you're growing grapes for, for wine here. We are, yeah. It's, uh, it's our little slice of heaven. Yeah. And how long, have you, how long have you been doing that? How long have you been growing, growing grapes and making wine? Well, the, the vineyard was an established vineyard when we bought the property. So it's a, it's a mature vineyard. Mm -hmm. um, when we bought the property, we weren't necessarily looking for a vineyard. Mm -hmm. We were looking for a property where we could uh, use it to rescue animals. Um, so part of the culture here, the, the environment is we're a, we're a, we're a plant-based uh, property mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, honors uh, the soulness and sanctity of all forms of, of life. Um, mm -hmm. When I saw the size of the property and the fact that it had a vineyard that was almost an acre in size, I said to myself, this is, this is too good to be true because um, I love wine, I always have, and I, uh, I, I found myself becoming a winemaker mm -hmm. as, a, as a second career. Mm -hmm. And uh, so did you just jump, jump into being a vintner? I mean, has that kind of always been kind of something that you've, you've looked at and just said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in? No, I, I really didn't know what I was getting myself into, so I did a lot of uh, diligence. I talked to the prior owner for quite a bit, the uh, his vineyard manager, his winemaker, and started to learn about what was involved in making the decision to do this not just as a hobby but as a business. Mm -hmm. A lot of the properties in this area have little vineyards in their front yards where you know they're making 10, 15 cases of wine to consume. Mm -hmm. This property with a good harvest makes almost 200 cases of wine. Oh wow. And so that's still a relatively small single family vineyard mm -hmm. compared to many but for this area it's the largest vineyard in in the in the area interesting and how is the how is the weather here how is the soil for for growing is you, have you found it accommodating well that's one of the real blessings about living on this property it's the ecosystem and the soil composition is is really quite remarkable mm -hmm. so it's perfect for not only making wine but the property itself, if you look at the grass, even during a drought, looks like it's new marathon. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 fl the flowers, the vegetation, is, is, everything is working perfectly together. The property is, as you know, above street level. Mm -hmm. And so we're getting a nice little breeze, even on a warm day, mm -hmm. we're getting really the perfect climate, working with the really rich soil to uh, be really the the perfect platform for making not only great wine but the beautiful surroundings that mm -hmm. accompany the property. And I see you've terraced some of your your hills to kind of match with what's happening in you know Europe or Napa. We did. I mean, mm -hmm. we wanted this to be a feeling for the community mm -hmm. where they could get away from their normal stresses of life, and instead of traveling 45 minutes or an hour to a nearby resort, they could come here and try to uh, kind of escape their stresses and, and, and pressures in life and feel a sense of relaxation, being in nature mm -hmm. and enjoying um, everything we offer here as well as some really great wine. Well, that is one thing that I noticed when I first arrived was just kind of the, the calming sense that you get when you walk on the property. I mean, you don't realize that you're right on the edge of, you know, a metropolis with 10 million people. Um, you would never know that coming out here just, you know, five minutes from the 
from the 101 freeway. It, 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 that's a very uh, consistent comment we get from people that come here. They're blown away yeah. that something so um, magical mm -hmm. could be literally five minutes from the freeway where you feel like um, you, you know, you're in another country. Right. You could, you could be in the hills of um, Italy mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and you, would, you would never know it right. um, because of how fortunate we are to be on this property. Mm -hmm. And you're growing different uh, varieties of grapes, right, to make different types of wines. Is that yep, yeah. Yeah, there's three different uh, grapes that we that we grow. Mm -hmm. There's uh, Grenache grape, which is actually pretty rare for uh, not only this area, but it's not a common grape you find even not only in California but in the United States. Mm -hmm. It's it's a grape that you see predominantly in countries like Spain or Portugal or Italy, where if you go to a restaurant in a country like that, you'll see Grenache, mm -hmm. different Grenaches on their menu out here it's not very common. And so um, I really didn't know much about Grenache. I had to get an education about Grenache. And um, it, it's a very, very nice wine that you can drink not only in the evening, but mm -hmm. during the day and not get tired or get a headache. It's kind of a lighter wine that mm -hmm. people drink like a Pinot. Mm -hmm. They're, they are used to that kind of a lighter texture. Mm -hmm. uh, wine and ours is uh, really very full of flavor. Um, so we've got Grenache grapes we grow and we also use that to make our rosé. Okay. Um, and then the rest of the property is primarily Syrah grapes. Mm -hmm. And then we recently have planted um, some cab vines. So okay. we'll be in a couple of years making in addition to our Grenache, our Syrah and our rosé and also we make a blend called the Boho Blend, we'll be making a 100% a, a cab wine. Okay. Now, in, in regards to the Grenache, did you, did you research that or did somebody say, hey, we think that this might do well here and, you know, there's a market for it? What was, what was your kind of thinking about getting into that? Yeah, again, I mean, the, the, we inherited the grapes and so gotcha. they, were, they were already uh, on the property. Mm -hmm. The question that was that we needed to answer was what we were gonna do with that Grenache grape. Were we gonna use it for just blending? Mm -hmm. Were we gonna make Grenache with it? Or were we gonna use it to make both Grenache and Rosé? I'm not a Rosé drinker at all. And when our winemaker said that um, he would make, he wanted to make Rosé, I said, I don't, I don't know about that. He said, let me make six cases for you. This was the first year we were here and if you like it, and I think you will, then the next year we'll make more. And those six cases went very quickly. Interesting. They were fantastic. It's more of a, uh, a drier uh, rosé than a sweet, fruity, fruit-forward rosé. Mm -hmm. um, and so people who are looking for more of a drier, crisp rosé, I think would really like ours. Interesting. And I also uh, understand that you guys do hand harvesting and destemming all by hand. You're not using any machines. It's like a, a labor of love. You took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> I mean, we're not really in this um, to uh, get rich. Sure. Our goal is to make the absolute best wine that people in the community will taste and say this is like tastes like it's from Napa. Mm -hmm. And so when we started to get that kind of feedback, we were comfortable saying this is like Napa quality wine. Mm -hmm. I mean, we drop a lot of fruit, so we don't squeeze every juice out of the bottle. We're make, we're, we are focused on quality and not necessarily quantity. We could probably make another 50 cases from the grapes that are on the property, but instead we're trying to produce less, but produce really high quality uh, wine. And you, and you age the wine in, in real barrels, not, is that correct? Well, so rosé is not really a wine that you need to age. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much ready to go uh, right out of the bottle. So if you, you know, go to a wine bar or, or you go to a restaurant, you'll see rosés that are 2022s. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't have to think twice about drinking it because mm -hmm. it hasn't been aged. 
Really the same thing with Grenache. Mm -hmm. Grenache doesn't really need to be aged that much. Um, although it gets better with aging, it's ready to, to drink. Mm -hmm. um, our Syrah, we do age for 12 months in French oak barrel. And um, the, the Boho blend, which is a blend of Cab Syrah with a little bit of Grenache, we age in French oak barrel for 18 months. Okay. So that's our flagship wine. Mm -hmm. um, and the Syrah is our estate Syrah that we call Sinner Syrah. Um, because as my wife likes to say, when you taste it, we think it's sinfully delicious. Awesome. So we called it Sinner Syrah. Very cool. I hope that doesn't sound too candid no, like great. a commercial. It's fun. <laughs> um, and you, you guys are now participating in, in, I mean, I saw the California Wine Festival in Santa Barbara. I mean, you're kind of expanding. You're in local restaurants. Yeah, we've been invited to participate in wine festivals in Santa Barbara. We've done it two years. We'll be going on our third year in Huntington Beach and Dana Point. Um, we've, uh, our wines are on a number of wine menus in local restaurants like 101 North, Rustico. Um, we're in uh, wine bars, um, so you know we also have a wine club. Mm -hmm. um, okay. We we really are a word of mouth mm -hmm. uh, vineyard, although we do have a a website where you can purchase our wine on 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 site right. on the website. But um, we're we're out there, you know, in the community and and as far north as Santa Barbara and as far south as. At San Diego. Okay, that's that's great. Yeah. And uh, water, that's a big question. And we've had some amazing storms, but we're not, you know, out of the, out of the, you know, dark yet with our drought situation. But I understand that grapes don't really take that much water once they're established. If you found that you can put them on micro drips and they just kind of do their own thing? Yeah, exactly. All of our uh, the vineyard is all on micro drip and the 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 vines have an incredible capacity for storing water in their in their roots. So mm -hmm. you could go through a drought and um the, the if you if you don't uh get a bad harvest if you get a bad harvest it's not necessarily because they don't have enough water, mm -hmm. right? It's because of uh, being impacted by wildlife, you know, who are looking for food or just, uh, you know, 115 degree heat that is right. three or four weeks nonstop. Right. But it's not usually because they're not getting enough water. Yeah. So we were talking earlier about the, the Woolsey fire and how it came, came pretty close. And, uh, you know, smoke and ash fell in the area, of course, for, for many days. And that had a had a different impact on your on your grapes and the flavor. Yeah, you know, when you taste wine, you're tasting not only the fruit, but sometimes you know the winemaker will add certain things to the wine. Um, if you if you like wine that's oaky, you're going to pick that up with wines that have been aged in in you know new or old French oak, and. Um, some wines, you know, that are in areas where there's been volcanic, uh, a history of volcanoes that gets in the soil and affects the taste of the wine. Mm -hmm. There's no question but that the Woolsey fire, um, certainly, you know, the, the soil absorbed the smoke and the ash and the wines that were produced the year after that harvest, uh, people have commented, have a bit of a smoky flavor to it. but. Mm -hmm. They seem to like it, mm -hmm. um, whereas you know the the more recent harvests, I don't think you get as much of that smoky uh, kind of uh, overtone to them. Sure, it's it's interesting how mother mother nature works her works her magic in so many different ways. We we we're dependent upon uh, luck, mm -hmm. um, mother nature, in terms of the soil, the sun, and then of course, you know, a good. A good wine manager and a good winemaker, mm -hmm. all of those things come into play in whether you're going to make a good wine or not. In addition to wine, you're, you're also a, a wellness center. You've got yoga retreats, you've got spiritual retreats, you've got occasional guest speakers that come. Yeah, these are things that we've done uh, for private small groups, mm -hmm. um, uh, whether it's a, a corporate retreat or um, a group of like-minded people. 
uh, or uh, neither of those, just people in the community mm -hmm. that are looking for an outdoor experience where they can be with nature and uh, d do some things again uh, that are right here in the local community, whether it's yoga on our yoga platform or meditation or sound bath in our, our, uh, our teepee or taking a hike in the surrounding area. Um, we offer all those th things to the community and that's really my wife Gina's vision. She's a certified sound bath healer. Okay. And, uh, and again, you know, we live on the edge of 10 million people, which is hustle and bustle and stress and, you know, come out here and detox and maybe do yoga or drink wine or, or do both. I, I'd be interesting to combine the two. I don't know if that's a, if that's a thing. It definitely is a thing, <laughs> um, and uh, we, we, we like to send people home after their yoga or meditation or sound bath with a complimentary bottle of wine. Nice. Um, so they enjoy both of our offerings, but the two kind of go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And your gardens are beautiful. I mean, it's, it's, uh, how, are, you, are you the horticulturalist here? You, you know, it's funny. People who know me um, don't think I'm handy, but my wife says I am. And um, I really enjoy doing that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the, it's, the, it's the actual opposite of what I do for a living. Um, I wear a suit every day and, and I'm a lawyer, but I love, especially on the weekends, being out here and uh, just working the, work in the grounds. Um, we have a, an organic uh, garden. Uh, as part of our property, so we do farm to table. Oh, you do? And my wife and I love to um, work in that garden, you know, planting and replanting, and, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of fun. Very cool. And you've had some, some corporate events, chamber, chamber of commerce type activities? Yeah, we've had, the, we've had chambers here for a retreat. We've done things as sponsors of the Thousand Oaks Civics Arts Plaza. Um, we even did a law firm retreat where partners from around the country came and did a business retreat. Oh, interesting. And it was during the rain, and they actually did it inside the teepee. Oh, wow. Um, which was, uh, the comments that we got was it was one of the more collaborative, uh, soulful experiences any of them ever uh, had. Right. So, you know, we do all kinds of stuff like that. Um, but uh, we really offer things like that on a, a really selective basis sure. to people that are uh, really looking for the, the right place mm -hmm. and the right opportunity to have a retreat where they're, they're, they're having both a business experience but also uh, an enjoyable one. Old Agora, it's part of Agora Hills? Yeah, this is really a, a small-knit community that goes back decades, and there's really only a couple of areas in this part of Southern California where they're thought of as horse properties, uh, where really, you know, you, you must respect when you're driving around or walking around this area, uh, the animals. Mm. And um, that means driving slow, um, that means appreciating Mother Nature, mm -hmm. um, and, and Old Agora is one of those areas. So this originally was a horse property uh, by one of the original owners, and um, we eventually will use part of this property to rescue animals. Mm -hmm. My wife is an uh, animal rescuer, an animal activist, um, so this is an entirely plant-based property. Um, that is consistent with the surrounding area of just honoring and respecting Mother Nature, the environment, the culture, and the animal kingdom. So mm -hmm. during the drought, for example, this became a haven for all kinds of wildlife that we captured daily on our nest cameras. There were rac We saw raccoons here last night, coyotes, uh, a bobcats, um, and we, we do nothing to deter them mm -hmm. from enjoying our fountains and drinking water and unfortunately sometimes getting a meal from our grapes. <laughs> sure, sure. And you guys are doing uh, some farm-to-table even events where you're 
growing yeah. food and, and serving it to your to your guests. So on behind us is a uh, a very long table with a beautiful pergola above it. Um, we we serve food up here that's farm to table. Um, in our garden, we're planting garlic, tomatoes, um, raspberries, strawberries, you name it. So it's it's part of the fun experience here of enjoying food from the earth and uh, and the surroundings. And the wine, of course, goes with that. The wine goes beautifully with it. <laughs> Absolutely. Actually, speaking of wildlife, there's going to be a, a, a wildlife bridge soon over the, over the freeway. Yeah, just uh, about a, a mile down the way, and I think that's really uh, good news mm -hmm. for both the wildlife and the community. Um, there's unfortunately too many times when, um, you know, even deer, coyotes, wildlife are getting struck by vehicles, trying to cross the road. Mm -hmm. This will be just a natural pathway for them to go from one side of, um, of, of the community to the other uh, without hopefully getting hurt. Sure. Um, so it's, it's really a, it, an exciting time period. Um, and we're all kind of looking forward to seeing that being completed. Yeah. And of course, you and your wife, of course, have created this Garden of Eden, Heaven, Heaven Hills Estate, so the animals are welcome too. They're, they're always welcome. Um, you know, I'm surprised that there haven't been bunny rabbits running across our feet. <laughs> <laughs> but we, you know, if, if you didn't know it, you would think this was a zoo. Um, we've got, my wife feeds the squirrels in the morning and the birds. Um, so, you know, you don't have to be a human to be welcome on this, uh, this sanctuary. That's awesome, because, you know, so much farming is, a, is about getting rid of the animals, you know, and you, you kind of have it working in a, in a symbiotic relationship here. Yeah. Our winemaker isn't too happy about it because he <laughs> wants to see us produce as much as we can. But this last year, you know, normally we're making up to 200 cases of wine. We'll be only producing probably around 75 cases. Okay. So we, we it's a much smaller harvest. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean the wine won't be just as good, but that's just because there was a lot of hungry animals right. looking for food and we were we were a good place to find it instead of like us going to the grocery market. Right. Well, you know, if the wine is that good, you just charge a premium, right? <laughs> well, yeah, the prices are going people, up a people little bit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so for folks that you might not be so local and, you know, can't visit the restaurants that were mentioned, how, how can folks have a, have a taste of your, of your wine? Well, we, we do offer our wines for purchase online and we ship, uh, but we also, uh, just about every month are doing a wine tasting event at various locations. There's the Conejo Valley uh, Food and Wine Trail uh, during the summer. There's wine festivals in Santa Barbara, as I mentioned, and all over uh, Northern and Southern California where, we're, uh, where we are uh, sampling our wines. And uh, we also do, you know, pr on private occasions, mm -hmm. uh, wine tastings on the property. Oh, very cool. And and what would that website be that folks could check out what you have and yeah. maybe order a bottle? It's called heavenshillestate.com. Heaven, heavens, plural, heavens. Heavens, Heavens Hill Estate, all one word. And if you go on the website, we have a gallery, pictures, and we also have a, vi a virtual, through a drone, presentation of the entire property. I think it's six or seven minutes long. Okay. So this is a bottle of, of Sinner that you were mentioning. That's the Sinner Syrah. And uh, I'll hand you also our Rapture Rosé. Rapture Rosé. Which is uh, two of the, uh, the four wines that we make. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. And the other was the Grenache. The other is what we call the Goddess Grenache and the Boho Blend. Well, Neil Martyr, thank you so much for being our guest on this edition of Farm Talk. We greatly appreciate being here. It's been wonderful to talk to you. Thank you. We want to thank our sponsors, Opus Escrow and The Money Store. Be sure to check us out wherever you find your favorite podcast. And you can also watch us on YouTube at Paul Ward Farm Talk and tune in for the next episode. Thank you so much. <laughs>